So remember in the last video where there was this constant roaring noise because I, uh, that's crooked. It's always crooked. Um, because I wouldn't turn off the heater. Now it's so hot in my house that it's like 52 degrees outside. That's Fahrenheit, so it's colder for all you people in Canada and Australia and Brazil. Hi. So now I am literally wearing this in my house. So here we go. Remember I was talking about all those mood problems I was having earlier? just want to take a moment to appreciate the bipolar mood chart. This shit sucks. I'm just going to be full honest. It just sucks. There's nothing quite like having to get to the end of your day and being like, oh, what was my mood? Let me track my mood through the months. And so you do that and you're like, oh, I feel like I fucked up and now I have to go to sleep. Did you know that YouTube now makes you check whether or not you think you used profanity in the first third of your video? Do you know that in my four years on YouTube, I've made $38 in AdSense because I demonetize myself so much? Every year, I try to post a video of me playing the same song on the harp, and it's my I play harp, be impressed with me song, which you should have one for every instrument you play. And I posted it on Facebook like I do every year, and every year people go, oh my gosh, I didn't know you play the harp, because I don't really play the harp. I just own a harp and I can do like... <laughs> not my main harp. This is the harp that I found at a yard sale. Swap me. When we were leaving, I saw the harp. I just like did a hard right. This is actually the Sky Mall harp. For everybody who used to um, go flying places, you know, I was a child who liked to read. We went to Minnesota every year and um, I always wanted this harp. It's not a good harp. You also can no longer purchase it from Sky Mall. For those of you who don't know, Sky Mall is a publication that used to be in the seat back pocket on airplanes, and they sold normal things like toasters that talked to the voice of Darth Vader or replicas of the sword that was broken. It was all just things that you didn't know existed but suddenly had to have. The world is a sad place without Sky Mall. But everyone was going, oh, you gotta do a you gotta do a harp video, and I said, well, I can't because I don't really play the harp. I know one. This is my harp song, the Impressed With Me song. And the thing you need to know is that before I was... By the way, I don't know how much of it was inspired by this, but I recently watched Defunct Land's uh, coverage of The Big Comfy Couch, which I did watch when I was a child, and it felt like looking at myself with like how she'd just pull things out from the couch. But yes, before I was the guitar girl, I was the girl who carried her ukulele with her everywhere. Um, Wow. I didn't even do that before this. Someone says, oh, play something, play something. And you have that song you always play when someone says to play something. And I was going through what mine were for my various instruments. And it just was this weird showcase of who I used to be. No one wants to be. Oh my God. See? See what happens? No one wants to be honest with you. Say that just because I'm not I don't play the ukulele very much. So I got your head on it, it's just not what I expected. Anyway, has that nice bar chord intro. So people are like, oh, they actually know how to play. I was really interested in just the same band every time. This one will not still be in tune. This ukulele is like 60 years old. Yep. I wonder if I can even remember the words to that. But the important thing to know about this ukulele is that it does have the mandatory shaky egg. This was my grandfather's, great-grandfather's. It is a harmony ukulele, which means it was sold at Sears and is made out of plywood. But it's very cool in that it's very old. These are not the original tuners on it, because the original tuners were breaking. So I didn't want them to break, so I got new tuners. That's the beauty of uh, friction pegs right there. You can just kind of swap them out without changing the instrument. Older, but don't feel... Is that the right chord? I'm going to have to actually look up the chords to that, see? That's what you should never do. You should never allow yourself to forget my I Play This Instrument Be Impressed With Me song. 
Oftentimes you want the song that uh, kind of goes in your vocal range too. I used to sing a whole lot more than I do now. I don't know what ended up happening with that, but uh, yeah, then someone's like, well, no, don't you own like 40 guitars? Because for those of you who can't see the whole room or have never seen the whole room, guitar, 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 guitar box, guitar, guitar, or bass, guitar, guitar. So I have more guitars than I have guitars, but I have what? One, two, uh, three, three acoustic guitars. I like collecting musical instruments, and you don't necessarily need to be good at an instrument to want to play it. Like, that's not a requirement. Because uh, my 12-string and the 6-string are both ovations. They have the um, fiberglass backs, which makes them amplify really nice. Um, but it also means that uh, I developed this weird hobby habit of uh, shoving the guitar into my armpit and then playing like Gollum. So I've been trying to get over that, but... That special kind of feeling Guess my best excuse on the wagon again Well today I say sweet things But tomorrow I'll be making up excuses so long since I've been in that, that special kind of feeling. Guess my best excuse on the wagon again. Well, I got no real excuse on the wagon again. There you go. That's basically all of the I play this instrument now be impressed with me songs. I can guarantee you you've heard my guitar ones a million times even if you don't know that's what you're listening to. So yeah, the hand tremors are back. That's been making uh, YouTube real fun to do. Has just been to um, be starting to do something, especially when I'm editing and I just see that my hands are moving on their own while I'm filming. I look at me in the video, I'm just like, what is going on? Yeah, that's still going on. Um, the fact that I'm putting out a new video today or whenever you're watching this, um, that's not like a, oh, everything's better kind of thing, that's... being productive and being healthy are not the same thing. Sometimes you're doing one and you're not doing the other, and I have a really unfair tendency to say, I'm being productive and therefore I am healthy. I can't do what I want to do because I'm not healthy, is a thing. But that doesn't conversely say, I am fine because I went to work today. Also, I just had two really bad days in a row at work, and I need to get this out. Do not allow your children to go anywhere near the floor of retail establishments. I'm about to tell you why. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, I am frequently, at my job, the person who is the most in charge. The other people leave, my job is to stop the store from burning down until the other people get back here. Yes, so yesterday, two days ago, Monday. It's, no, Sunday. It was Sunday, because it's Tuesday right now while I'm recording this. Embarrassed as hell kid comes up and goes, my friend threw up over there. I'm like, okay, cool. I can clean this up. Tiny Pink was a janitor. Tiny Pink worked at a restaurant where we did have a janitorial service. We did all our own cleaning. Um, I can clean probably better than a lot of people there. And I'm also one of the few people who can, like, clean up vomit without making a huge scene about it. Like, I'll bring it up later, I'll be like, oh god, I cleaned up vomit earlier today. But the whole time I'm doing it, I'm not dry heaving or anything like that. So I go over to look at the vomit. It is an alarmingly large amount of vomit. So I immediately need four wet floor signs, three associates, two turtle tubs, and a partridge in a pear tree. Like, I just had to go. And we have emergency biohazard cleanup kits. I told my store manager I need to reorder them. If we don't have one, and someone throws up, 
I'm closing that part of the store. I'm not cleaning that up. There is a plague. I do not want to get vomit COVID. I don't want to get any COVID, but if I get COVID for cleaning up vomit, I'm... I don't know what I'll do with my life, but I can't keep working there. I'm gonna have to, like, go jump off a cliff. Safely. But the kits are actually really great. Open the kit. It has all kinds of PPE, including shoe covers. You put on the PPE. You take the powder. You put the powder over the organic spill. We're gonna call them organic spills from now on because this is the first in a long chain of things I'm gonna talk about here. Well, you take the powder, you put it over. The powder, it absorbs a lot of the spill, but it also contains it and it makes it so that it doesn't spread. So if you have your gloves, your mask, I had my mask over my mask, your goggles, your all of that on, you can safely scoop up contaminated things like blood if it's been absorbed by this powder. And so you get the little disposable scoop, you scoop it into the bag, you throw the scoop in the bag, you tie the bag off, you take the second bag, you put all the PPE in the second bag, you put the first bag in the second bag, you tie it off. It's not even that gross, but it is still cleaning up vomit. Once you've done that and it's all biohazard clean, you still want to clean the rest of the area. You've cleaned up the spill, but you want to clean the area. If you've dumped that powder out, you need to sweep that area before you break out the mop or you will catch all the powder that didn't absorb anything into your mop and you will be cleaning that mop for the next 35 minutes. Ask me how I know. So there goes one of our two biohazard spill cleanup kits. I know that they gave us the biohazard spill cleanup kits when we became pet friendly. That's going to come into play in a minute too. So I know that they were intending for us to use them for human or pet spills, but now we only have one and there is a plague. Go in the next day. I've been in for like six minutes I hear on my radio someone goes, we need someone to clean up dog poop by cut counter. I'm like, oh no, oh no. And I'm like, okay, cool. Let me get a towel, you know, get one of those little handy wipes. I'll go, I'll pick up the poop. It's not gonna be a big deal. Dog is having massive diarrhea. Lady's trying to scoop this into bags. I'm just like, ma'am, just get your dog out of my store. Stop helping, you're making it worse. It's not even the worst vomit I've seen at my store, but it was, you know, like nasty doggy diarrhea. If I knew we could get more, this is what I would want to use the bio spill kit for. But we didn't have the bio spill kit. We only have one left. If we have a human bio spill, I'm not gonna um, have it. Not only am I not going to clean up a bio spill without proper PPE and supplies, I will not permit anybody who is working at the same time as me to do that. That is not safe. That is not what we do. And if that means that my company loses money because they couldn't invest in a $45 blood and body fluid cleanup kit, hang on a second. Now I have a question. Blood and body fluid cleanup kit. They're only 36 bucks. Why don't we have a hundred of these? That's the most expensive of these is like 40 bucks. Why do we not have a hundred of them? There's a pandemic. Oh my God. Anyway, so then I was like, well, fine, normal day, go home. Lady, again, it's complicated. I can't talk about it until I know it's been resolved. But um, someone came in, wanted to do a return for a item that usually can't be returned after a certain date and that she purchased in 2019. It is 2021. I also used to work multi-departments before they put me in the position I'm in right now. So I know how to do pretty much everything except how to order more body fluid cleanup kits or else we'd already have them. And so the person who uh, is in charge if I leave not only doesn't know how to do this kind of return in a normal time, which uh, we're no longer offering the service anyway, so doing this kind of return is going to be a thing of the past. So it's not hugely important that anybody knows. And I'm just trying to leave. She wants her return. And so I'm trying to find a way to get this to work. I want to leave. I need to get my prescription before the pharmacy closes at 7. I was off at 6. It's 6.41. And I'm just so ready to... No, I skipped a part. There's a thing that happened in between dog poop time and lady had weird return. It was kind of really bizarrely defensive about it. And that was, I'm off at six. We have an alarm in the bathroom that says, go look at the bathroom toilet paper. 
It doesn't actually says that. It says, Bading Dong, please complete your restroom check. But you go in there, you go in the bathroom, you say, toilet paper, seat covers, nothing on the floor. Toilet paper, seat covers, nothing on the floor for each stall. You say, nothing is overwhelmingly stinky in here. Sitting pink here. Uh, first of all, this is what it looks like when you sleep in your makeup and then don't really wipe it all off before you start editing. And second of all, I'm just here to say the reason why the bathroom was not overwhelmingly stinky is that I had already had to clean it after the whole dog poop incident because that customer who'd been scooping all the doggy diarrhea into baggies just threw them away in the bathroom. So I had already cleaned the bathroom once at this point in the day. So just throwing that out there. That we got to paper towels. There's no vomit in the sinks. You press the button inside the bathroom that says, I went in the bathroom and made sure nothing was broken. So I go in there. So I know that a lot of the people who follow this channel use the men's bathroom and don't menstruate. So you're gonna have to bear with me. I had to touch this. You're just gonna have to hear about this. So man up and listen. There is a little metal tin in most United Statesian women's restrooms. It's stuck on the wall. It has a hinged top and you put your used sanitary napkins and tampon applicators in this tin because you can't really take them with you out to the main trash. So there is a little wax lined paper bag in the tin and you are supposed to as an adult, know to put your bloody pad in the bag in the tin and not in between the bag and the wall. And I open up the thing and I see that dent. I'm like, somebody fucking... So now I have to reach in there with my gloved hand, pick it up, and thankfully it was wrapped, so it wasn't awful, but it was still like... And put it in the actual bag, pull that bag out to put it in the trash. I say, okay, I'm getting a new liner for this one. I'll check the other one. I open it up. There is some fucking diarrhea-covered underwear in that tin. That's not what that tin is for. The diarrhea has leaked out and is now on the insides of the tin. So I have to then take this, put it in the... It cut off in the middle of that. And you know what? We're not getting out of it that easy. I'm telling this whole story. So there's now diarrhea on the inside of the tin. I can't believe I have to go back to this. Uh... So I have to take that bag and the underwear. So I still had my radio on because I was just supposed to be checking in. And I say, someone threw away underwear in the ladies' restroom. And we had two different people on the radio go, again? It just keeps happening. So then I have to get the clothes sign, close the bathroom, get the sanitizer, get better gloves, start wiping the feces out of the inside of this tin. Um, so I'm trying to get all that done. And of course people are coming in and they're going, well, this is a really bad time to close the bathroom. And it was not this week, it was a couple weeks ago, but it was one of the greatest things that's happened to me in recent times at my job. I'm uh, closing the bathroom because I need to clean it. Uh, and I needed to clean it because somebody had uh, gotten menstrual blood on the floor. Generally, for all the people who are learning about menstruation from this video. I need to clarify that I have cleaned up my fair share of semen in my time as being a someone who works in public cleaning. So if I've had to clean it up, you can watch two minutes of a YouTube video where I talk about a blood spot on the floor that happened to come out of a uterus. So grow up and listen up. Uh, and there's a drop there that falls on the ground. And then Mima sees it and flips the fuck out and tells us she's calling the CDC. This is generally the cycle is there was a single drop of menstrual blood on the floor and someone loses their shit over it. She was acting like there was a massacre in that bathroom. So I have to close the bathroom to clean it and it's on the floor. So I have to actually mop the floor. Uh, so I take the whole janitor cart and I lodge it in the doorway so that you physically cannot get into the bathroom. And I'm cleaning this and someone comes in and leans over the cart and goes, excuse me, this is a really bad time to clean this. We need this right now. I need this bathroom right now. You can't be cleaning it right now. Yeah, my customer service voice go, go, it'll just be a moment. I'm just cleaning up the blood over here. And the color drains out of this woman's face and she goes, blood? No, take your time, take your time. Or we're, we're in no hurry. You can take your time, don't worry. Just thank you for cleaning that up. I'm like, oh, what's this? This is a bad time right now. It's not a bad time to sit down and look at blood while you pee. 
Oh my gosh, you're a fucking child. The only other thing I don't know, and I don't really want to know, but I have witnessed, how do you shit on the underside of the toilet seat? Through what mechanics? Do not explain to me through what mechanics. I want this to be a theoretical thing. Through what mechanics does one poop on the underside of the toilet seat? The way that biohazards are cleaned up, and this is approved by OSHA and the CDC, these kits are designed so that we don't have to call in a biohazard disposal team when someone vomits. A team member, an experienced team member with training, they clean up the vomit uh, with the kit and it's safe. I scoop it up with the trowel, it goes in the biohazard bags, then we sweep and mop the area with our own stuff, which may or may not be rated to kill COVID. Safety-wise, that's fine, because you're a human who's not licking the floor. But watch your crotch spawn, please. Don't let them walk around on their hands and knees on the floor, because they're going to be putting their hands in some, you know, area that might have had vomit aerosols land on it, um, and then they're going to put that in their mouth. Those toys that we're selling, they're not cleaned. Nobody goes down at night and wipes down the product. We wipe down cart handles, pin pads, cleaning stations, bathrooms. No one is going through the kid craft aisle and wiping down every Funko Pop. But kids are going through the kid craft aisle after walking around on their hands and knees pretending to be babies and touching every Funko Pop. So yes, tell your children that everything in any given store is covered in vomit. That it is, it just is. Anyway, um, we were here to talk about the harp, weren't we? We're like 28, 30 minutes into this video and I've just been venting about work. This is not my good harp. I have a good harp. I want to make a third one. Once John Kovacs uh, harp kits are back in stock, I'm going to make a third harp. Because this one is the right size, but it's too heavy. Sorry about that. Oh. Anyhow, uh, shout out to everybody who has messaged me on Twitter and uh, told me that I uh, or that I inspired them to get guitars. That's been one of the coolest things that's happened to me basically all, like not just this year, but all the 2020 as well, was people just being like, you convinced me to get a guitar. That's been so exciting. Uh, also... I might have used my Corona Bucks in an incredibly predictable way. You're gonna have to just wait till the next video. This was mostly just kind of a test video. Um, my family very coolly and very kindly gifted me Final Cut for uh, Christmas. When I was in college I used Final Cut to edit all my videos and it's not inexpensive. So finally being able to edit them in a system that does more than iMovie. It's gonna be really exciting for me. So mostly I just kind of wanted to record me talking a little bit so that I could put it into a kind of video so that I'd have a video that I put out at some point. So that's the story of me cleaning up vomit and then bitching about it on the internet. Uh, if you liked this video uh, and would like to see more like it, you should subscribe. God damn. Did I just do the lockpicking lawyers outro? Okay. Um, I have a Patreon. We've been having fun with the Patreon by that. I mean, I'm way behind on that. I fell behind with all the um, garbage, manic episode, depression, things like that. Um, you know, just trying to get my head above water. And Patreon kind of fell by the side. So everybody who's getting their Patreon things this month is going to be getting like two, three months worth of stuff. And I keep feeling like I'm going to really disappoint you. But if you want to join the group and be disappointed, it is patreon.com slash pink and the keytar cat. Um, I don't know where the cat is. She's probably in the other room right now. She always gets mad when I move the bed around. Uh, you can talk to me over on Twitter. I'm on Twitter all the time talking about really dumb things. Uh, if you want Twitter but slightly curated for a higher class audience, you can follow me on Instagram.
I'm gonna go have lunch and then I'll try to edit this into something usable. Uh, yeah. If you... Oh yeah. The subscribe part, that's what I'm supposed to tell you, is to do like subscribing and things.